Hello everyone. Welcome to where it all began here at the farm shop. The farm shop, Pheasant Farm, Barossa Valley. And um, I just have to get you to love kale like I do. So this is a kale and currant tart and it has pine nuts with it as well. Um, it is on our web, but I've used curly kale before, whereas this is black kale or cavolo nero. And I have both of them in my garden. And in winter, this is the best, best time for them. Now, the recipe calls for 600 grams of kale as whether it's curly or black kale, it doesn't matter, uh, as a bunch, right? But once you strip the bunch of kale of this really um, very thick stalk at the back, you want to take that out, leave some, you come down to half of that amount, which is 300. I actually weighed both the bunch and what was left. So, okay, let me put this in. You know, sometimes, you might have noticed when I was doing the um, videos at home, I have, I have veggies from the garden in the same way as if they were flowers. Anyhow, we started with 600. Uh, by stripping, I come down to 300 grams and I have blanched this kale first. Now, blanching is simply boiling water with a little salt and because this is fairly young kale, it only took three minutes of blanching and then I strained it off. I strained it off and when it was cool enough, I just squeezed the, the water out of it. In fact, I could even squeeze some more, it would seem. But don't try and do that when it's hot. Okay, so here, really good squeeze. Oh really good squeeze okay depending on just how strong your hands are I need to chop this to make it easier to handle which I'll come to later but in the meantime I've got three echelots shallots in some states echelots in South Australia I think we're just a little bit fancier echelot <laughs> so I've got two tablespoons of butter and I'll put some olive oil in. I do want that buttery flavor because I want to use everything I can to make you love kale and butter taste. What is it? Butter makes everything taste better. Um, so I'll get um, the echelot. Because it's going to be pureed, um, it doesn't matter that they're quite big pieces. I've just done slices rather than fine chop because it's easier um, oh, the smell of butter on a cold winter's morning okay a little bit of oil and I'll put the onion in now of course if you're going to put garlic I haven't today because I don't have any Australian garlic um, but if you are going to use garlic Make sure you start your onions first before uh, you um, have them par cooked before you add any garlic or you'll have uh, burnt garlic and it's very acrid. Okay, so I've got that on quite a low temperature so I can ignore it. Now, I'll just chop this roughly. Because it's blanched, it's very easy to um, chop together. I didn't bother chopping it beforehand. And I'm going to give just a whiz to this in the food processor later. And this is how easy tarts are. Because other than cooking off the onions and garlic if you're using it, blanching the kale, then all we're doing is putting the other ingredients together in the food processor and making um, a thick custard of it and then we will um, then we will bake it. Now of course that means pastry 
and I've done my sour cream pastry for you, so go back to one of your um, uh, one of the previous videos that are on YouTube now. Um, but I also, if you're gluten intolerant, I do have a recipe on the web for a really Moorish gluten-free pastry as well. And so this has already been blind baked, but I didn't cut off the top because I'd rather like it sort of curled over. But then I'm a very rustic cook. You could, of course, cut this off, um, but you want the color, you want the base cooked before it goes in for the final cooking. But in the final cooking, we might have to protect uh, the pastry edges. We'll come to that. So, did you know how good kale is for you? But it's no good at being good for you if you can't make it taste fantastic. And I think it's fantastic just on its own, but I seem to be in a minority in my household of two. I have quite a bit of uh, <laughs> trouble convincing Colin that he loves kale. And of course it grows so prolifically. Um, it is wonderful, wonderful. Now, salt. When I blanched the kale, I put um, salt in the blanching water, but I add a bit of salt now. Um, and as uh, I have currants, that the idea is to soak them overnight in verjuice. Now, it is um, a whole cup of currants. The currants are really important, but you could use sultanas or raisins but currants are just particularly beautiful with this. And I've used half a cup of verjuice um, uh, and covered it. And because I forgot to soak them overnight, lowest temperature in the microwave for two minutes, and they're perfect. They've absorbed nearly all that verjuice and plumped up. Now, I'm going to use another third of a cup of verjuice to deglaze the onion. I don't usually measure, I don't know why I did today. I'm just being very exact for you. I've been missing my videos. No, no, I haven't. <laughs> Whoops, high temperature for um, deglazing. Temperature up. I love that whoosh. And that picks up all that beautiful flavor at the bottom of the pan. I'll let it cook down for a little while to be syrupy. And then in my recipe I always had um, preserved lemon, which I'm going to show you in another week or so. Um, but this is say, a bit of a puree of my Maya lemon that next year is going to become a new product, but I'm just using it instead of preserved lemon today. Oh, see how lovely and golden that is. Now you don't want them to burn, but golden. Oh, I could eat just, I could eat those just as a dish myself. The onion in first, then the kale. Whoops. And then the eggs, the sour cream. But I'm not going to mince the currants or the pine nuts, but I will mince up the lemon because it's already a puree of, let's say, preserved lemon. Because at the moment that's um, just an alternative. You could use, leave it out, but the lemon in this is really fantastic. So, um, for eggs, Two thirds of a cup of sour cream. Ooh, I love sour cream. You could use creme fraiche. You could use thickened cream as well. Um, but uh, sour cream, because you have the sweetness of the currants, 
you're always looking for that um, balance. I've just been pulsing it up to now. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to mix together uh, the mixture and the currants and the pine nuts and put it into the pre-baked, par-baked mold of the pastry. Okay. I'm draining off the verjuice. In truth, I should have used that bit of verjuice to deglaze the onion. See? I always find a better way of doing things every time. So I've taken that much juice out, otherwise I won't, um, I won't bake off the custard well enough. I'm going to fold these in and fold the pine nuts that I have roasted off. You always roast off your nuts to, to get that, um, the oils and flavor being um, to their maximum. So that, and now the pine nuts. And that becomes the most beautiful mixture when it's baked. I'll just check it for seasoning. Pepper. I think it can do with a little more salt. I know that's a personal preference and it's already had some salt. Right, um, the lemon was pureed with the uh, kale and the onion. So now it's just a case of putting it into the pre um, par baked pastry. Let me make space so you can see that lovely pale golden including the base really important and we'll pour it in now my big thing is i'm not wanting to burn the edges so i will probably put some foil around a little way through but i'll just keep an eye um, uh, just to stop this pastry burning I should have said I used some beautiful currants from Mildura with this too. Okay, in we go, 200 degree oven. It's a 200 degree fan forced oven, but I'm going to put um, a timer on for 15 minutes and then I'll check to see whether I've got to protect the edges of the pastry. 15 minutes and I'll check. And then I'll tell you the final cooking time when that finishes and it's perfect. Ah. This is what I love. This surface you can put everything hot on. See? This is how I tell it's cooked. It's quite it's quite solid. It's sort of raised up a little in the center. And just one or two of the pine nuts are a little bit, no, it's the currants, a little bit burnt on top. I'll take them off. Just visuals. And I will leave that about five minutes before I unlock. Now I have options. I can square off the pastry but because this is the sour cream pastry and everyone loves the pastry, I'm not even going to do that. Some of it will come apart when I unfold the springform pan. But other than that, let me tell you, it is 
going to be something that all the family will love. I'll just wait till it cools a little, then I'll put it out on the tray. It's really important to rest uh, as it comes out of the oven before you open the springform pan and then see how beautiful and golden the pastry is. I love to put this in the center of the table and then serve it as a wedge with some sour cream as well. And it's just so tasty. Everyone will love kale from now on. Done.